that's good good times right here we're about to roll into some goodness fresh off of a brand new episode of hatred at the butt fuck nowhere show which, shit it might be hatred on this fucking that's episode. what i'm saying it's, like, it's we're gonna roll we're gonna probably continue the hatred right going forward yeah um my name's josh i'm here with the man the myth and the legend adam no the white belt fucking adam <laughs> i'm here with this fucking nobody <laughs> this guy who knows jack shit about music oh and by the way i also too know jack shit about anything at all and don't know anything about what i'm talking about so yeah uh just remember that uh anyways we're gonna talk about some interesting things music related today eventually but first before we do that if you like all of our other or if you want to hear us talk about things that aren't music related you can go to gameragemagazine.com where you can find our full menu of podcasts oh that's a good one a menu full menu our full assortment of podcasts of which is without censor which june 19th this upcoming wednesday if you're listening to this as it's come out is going to be a brand new episode a brand new interview with someone musically related which is the internationally renowned i would dare say uh game rage approved artist aka bk nine thumbs up nine thumbs up nine mutated thumbs straight up (laughs) we got all the fallout people to fucking go ahead and and give us thumbs up for this uh but yeah you can listen to their interview it's going to be coming out june 19th it's a fucking great interview it's 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 an amazing time it's the best interview it's the greatest interview. you're gonna love it it's the greatest interview you've ever heard in your life many such cases so so great many such cases um so you can follow us on instagram at game rage magazine instagram and tiktok at game rage mag twitter slash x adam at all gas no trash official where you can find out obviously the latest and greatest in musical news and information all right have at it fella all right we're, we're kind of late on this one but i do want to bring it up because it was something that we we're supposed to keep in touch with or follow up on uh the agreement between universal and tiktok oh yeah okay I love the fact that Universal was willing or was capable of disclosing what their agreements were as far as TikTok went, how they were fucking over artists and all this shit. And then when we when it comes to negotiating with TikTok, the whole thing was a fucking just everybody shake job well done. You really you really uh brought your best game yeah we we oh man we just knocked it out of the park all 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 that shit dude. yeah but as far as the contents of what actually happened not disclosed yeah because it was probably what and and the reason why it's not disclosed is because universal very conveniently discloses the part about what tiktok pays but it's that's the portion that trickles down to the artist, which is how they can get this fake fucking outrage for people saying, oh, the artists are getting fucked. Well, hey, Universal, you're the one who's actually paying the artists because they're contracted under you and you're the one selling their music to TikTok. So in reality, whatever, maybe they were getting three cents, let's just say, or whatever it was per thousand or whatever the number is. That's what Spotify pays, as I found out, which we'll talk about in a little, a little bit. But Three cents. Three cents, if that's the number that the artist gets, I'm sure the total is 10 cents and the record label is keeping seven. So now the record label probably got the deal up to, and these are not real numbers, but I'm just showing this as an example. (laughs) They probably got it up to 12% and they're giving the artist five. So they're still keeping seven. They made no less money. Or they might make more. Or maybe it's even higher where they're getting eight cents now and the artist is getting five so it's not like they did this out of the goodness of their heart no they did it because they wanted to make more money and they used it's so sad that they used the plight of the artist to fucking take advantage of tiktok and get all this false outrage going to get them to surrender to this which is what this is basically just extortion yeah if anything universal should be paying tiktok for breaking fucking artists they can't fucking do it Sure. Yeah, they're using TikTok to get people in insane popularity. And yeah, they should they should be paying TikTok, really, if you think about it. Yeah. And uh, I just wanted to follow up on that. And the fact that they didn't disclose anything about what the actual deal was. And it was just a lot of pats in the backs and handshaking. And yeah, we did such an outstanding job. Probably fucked over the artist more. They probably still make three cents. And yeah, the, the record label's probably making 20 now. <laughs> 
Yeah, they're making oh, way job more. Job well done. They're like, great, great work, guys. And TikTok's like, yes, great work. We can still continue to offer this service to our idiot fucking people who are on this platform. <sighs> and everybody will be beneficial except the people who actually made the content. <laughs> Not only the people on TikTok who make the content, but the people who are who their music was used to make that content. No oh. one's benefiting now who actually is a creator and only fucking suits and businesses are profiting from artists' work. Yeah. Terrible. Fucking A, dude. Anyways, uh, I guess we'll start off with the topic. We're, we're just going to go into it. And where we end up after that, uh, I think Josh is going to take the reins and Hopefully take us on a very bumpy <laughs> fucking road. Or oh, yeah. It's going to be rot full of potholes and fucking dirt. <laughs> uh, so the topic that I want to talk about, and it's not something I think is actually new. But the way I'm going to describe it is polarization. And in wrestling terms, I guess you could call it kayfabe. Yeah. But. What I believe right now is that when it comes to being an artist, I don't think you're pushing the envelope far enough if people are just lukewarm about you. If people could say, yeah, their music's pretty all right, and they entertain you for about five to ten seconds, you're not doing enough. I think what it takes to get to the level of say a lady gaga or a kanye west is you really have to divide people and that that that, that could be something like taylor swift where her fans are rabid fans they, they will defend her to the fucking i mean i i saw a comment on twitter or x that said oh my god what what taylor swift is going through is like it's like the holocaust that's the level of insanity that I need for an artist. Yeah, yeah. Or in an opposite but equal force, there has to be just as many people that hate you. Right. And I think anybody that's an artist that is able to entertain people for more, for, for an allotted time, if this is all people can talk about for a week or a month or a year, that's how you know you fucking made it is when you could drive a wedge between people. And I think that's what it takes. And I'm applying this on social media and whether people are listening to this podcast or not, I'm not really sure. But if you're one of those artists, I attacked one of you today and I, I, I have no problem saying it. There's this asshole named Nick, the pagan, Nick, the pagan. Well, I guess that's was his tag on social media. This motherfucker is scammed his way to this place called the fort. A notable venue in Los Angeles uh-huh. where a lot of great artists play. This motherfucker has not improved his following significantly since 2020. From 2020 to 2024, uh-huh. his following has not grown all that much. Okay. What he does is he goes to musicians. He goes to writers. He goes to radio DJs. He goes to all of them. Hey, can you make a video about my music? That'd be really great. And he goes to DJs. Hey, can you play your music? Can you play my music on KCRW? Can you play it on 88.5 SoCal Sound? Can you play it on K Rock or whatever the fuck? Whatever radio station, right? Yeah. This motherfucker scammed his way onto being the opening act for a show with Calexico. I don't even know. I've never listened to that fucking band. But they must be good or whatever if they're playing at the Ford, right? This motherfucker scammed his way to the top. You can go look at his social media numbers and know their shit. You can go on his Spotify and know that they're not any better than his social media numbers. One of his songs has 100,000, 100,000, I think, streams, right? Uh-huh. Okay, you you got lucky once. What about your other four songs? He hasn't released shit, I think, in the last two or three years, and he got placed on a bill at the Ford with this band called Calexico. I got to say, man, I respect it. That kind of scammery. Oh, that's fucking top notch scammery right there. That's like that's Nigerian <laughs> prince level scammery right there. You you have to respect his game. But oh, I yeah. also shat on him because he doesn't deserve it. And it shows that you don't have to. Your success doesn't have to be based on merit. True. It could as, all, a, it, as a musician, like you, you, you really don't have to be that talented. You just have to do the Nick Pagan thing and scam your way to the top. But anyways, I made that point because I knew it was going to throw people in a frenzy and it yeah. fucking did. Yeah. 
And this is what you should be doing as an artist to to get yourself to the all time great level, the transcendental level. What examples have we seen of that? Lady Gaga putting on a meat suit. Yeah. Okay. At an award show. It must have been the VMAs or whatever the fuck it was. That threw people into a frenzy. Everybody was looking at her in disgust. In reality, she might have been making herself stand out for all time because we're. Yeah. I'm talking about it now. Correct. Yeah. Marilyn Manson in the 90s used satanic imagery. He used Nazi visual themes. Oh, yeah. His lyrics, mostly tongue in cheek. If you were if you have a brain, I hope. If you understand the humor in his music is not really he did not invent those things. He did not invent Nazism, antichrist imagery, androgyny. He did not make those things. He he recontextualized them, perverted them, and then shoved it back in the face of humanity and said, look, and everybody's like, oh, my God, that's so detestable. That's that's fucking horrific. But those things already existed. True. And everybody is like, this is fucking entertaining or this is offensive. Whatever, whatever term, whatever side of the camp you fell on, it worked like a fucking charm. You took the fucking bait. <clears throat> yeah. People love shit to fuss about. That's what it comes down to. They, they say it in the fallout show when the, these these prisoners get killed or whatever, as you'll hear on the Game Rage Movies and TV podcast that we're reviewing the fallout show. Uh they say this line where it's, and if you haven't seen the fallout show, just forward ahead a little bit because there's a scene where these prisoners are all dead and the lady who's in charge, they're like, oh my God, everybody's like, what are we going to do about this? And she's like, who cares? People love something to fuss about. Like, this is great for us. Like, <laughs> fuck yeah. And so that's that's the point. People love shit to complain about. People love to get trapped in the bait and they love to tell you why you're wrong too. That's the other thing, especially something that they think is a slam dunk, like condemning Marilyn Manson for, for Nazi imagery, right? You would think that's a slam dunk, easy to fucking tell him he's wrong, blah, blah, blah. But then they... Ha- Caught the bait. Now they're fucking, he's reeling them in as they're continuing to argue and tell him shit. And then he fucking pops some shit like, ha ha, look at this bitch. And they're like, fuck, like, guess what? You bought the album so you could hear it. You paid for the song so you could listen to it. So you could talk shit about it. He wins. You lose. Either way, dead stop. No, no other option right there. And and the the worst thing is there was news networks that are NPCs that bought into this. They're, They're thinking, okay, how can I profit off this? You had to wait until... Marilyn, a a Marilyn Manson came along because your network was doing so shitty. I'm going to use the example of Fox News. Yeah. Having Marilyn Manson so they could try to make him look stupid. And he ended up looking super articulate. But we all know what the real reason why they had him on there is because they were trying to get ratings for their own fucking network. Yeah. That's how much NPCs they are, dude, is that they couldn't do their own dirt. So they have to fucking use Marilyn Manson. Uh Another good example is uh, Tipper Gore trying to utilize Congress to ban rap music or ban lyrics that they found detestable. And as a shitty side effect, we they didn't get outright banned because of freedom of speech, but they used, oh, what, now you have to slap a sticker on there that says this, this has bad words in it. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's what they got out of it. That is some NPC fuckery right there. And fuck those, fuck those assholes for, for trying to censor people's people's words people's opinions walmart did the same thing they wouldn't sell shit that had explicit content labels on it so what did they do if you wanted to get your shit there the record labels which again the artist had no control over this the record label says you know what what if we censor out the bad words and then you can sell it without that little sticker hey you know what we're okay with that so they did artists work got perverted so that the fucking record companies could make their money i bought speaker box the censored version for Walmart, not knowing that everything at Walmart is censored. Yeah. I hate it. Well, anyways, it, it was a bad experience. Yeah. I, I fuck Walmart. Agreed. Fuck Walmart. They're the worst. But getting back to the topic at hand, yeah. I think polarization, driving people crazy, making them entertain you for longer than 15 seconds, days, years. That's the way to stand out. Yeah. But you have to stand on the legs of the music, too. Right. It can't just be you're doing shit with shock and awe. True, yeah. It has to be that the music is right there with it. Right. So what what are your what well, what thoughts do you have to share? I think that 
I think you're right. I agree with you. I think that if you want to truly stand out or what have you, you have to do something provocative. You have to do something that people would think is crazy, right? (laughs) And there is a certain amount of people saying, again, it's, it's, it's going back to wrestling, but if you want to listen to us talk about the what killed WCW, that'll be on the Game Rage Wrestling Podcast. But there's a thing, a line in there that they said that the Turner executive had said that the reason why they all wanted to kill wrestling so bad was because there was a disconnect. And the disconnect was it drew the highest ratings of anything they've ever done. At bar none, dead stop, end of story. But advertisers hadn't caught up with that yet. So there were adver- they were still lost in the, well, this isn't quote unquote family friendly. So there wasn't, as much advertising revenue coming in, but they didn't need it. They were making money hand over fist on everything else, merchandise, all all the other shit, right? Pay-per-views, everything. So an artist, you don't, there isn't, there is a, there is a point to be made about someone staying quote unquote family friendly and trying to attract the widest audience. Right. But to me, that has an end date. That's got an expiration date on it. Cause eventually you're going to family friendly yourself into irrelevancy. And it's kind of like Taylor Swift is has been experiencing, and oh, now she's all of a sudden got this weird, edgy fucking personality, right? I don't think that's her doing. I think that's the record company saying, shit, the golden goose is about to die. We need to fucking give it some CPR, and we need to slap a different fucking outfit on this thing so it keeps laying the golden eggs. Before it goes stale. Correct. And... I think she was teetering on the edge of irrelevancy, and then all of a sudden, she's got this edgier new look. She's fucking some guy in the NFL. And conspiracy theory alert regarding Taylor Swift that I saw on another show. I think it was Keith Olbermann, which I don't necessarily like the guy that much, but it it was a clip that I saw. He was saying, you guys, I wonder if the NFL will adjust the Chiefs schedule based on Taylor Swift's tour dates, and guess what they found? When she's in a nearby city, that's when the Chiefs are playing at somewhere on a nearby city. When she's on tour, like they use the Bills as, a, as an example. They're playing at Buffalo in whatever, November. That weekend, Taylor Swift's playing in the Canadian city just across the border right there. Other coincidences lined up with the Chiefs schedule, right? And so there you go. She was teetering on the edge of in literally obscurity and now has been revived into the hottest topic just showing up at an NFL game, which is why I believe her relationship with Travis Kelsey is completely manufactured. I'm sure it's going to end at some point. I, I think it will. There is a, They have an end date in plan. When that starts getting stale, oh, they're on the rocks. Oh, shit, now people are going to get invested again. Eventually, they're going to break up, go their separate ways. Travis Kelsey is going to be the fucking heel. She's going to be the face who, who escaped this this horrible relationship and now she's going to go on to do so many great things and people are going to want to see her rise from the ashes right i can't wait to see all the albums she writes based on her relationship with travis kelsey that will essentially just be the same shit she's already been saying but she hadn't experienced it yet like you know what i'm saying that's terrible but anyways back to the actual topic at hand i think you're right i was i was i I posited you a theory and i and i've or not a theory but an idea that you had kind of said about your your thing, right? Well, I've kind of I've been talking to Millennial Frog, you know, the the resident game rage musical artist. <laughs> and, you know, the man is a fucking machine. I mean, Jesus Christ, he fucking makes music like nobody's business. He's put out six albums in the last like seven months. It's fucking insane. People are just not on his level. But one of the things that 4D chess in his brain. He was telling me about, cause I told him about this idea with this whole, the kayfabe and, you know, being polarizing and all this stuff. And so he said, what about if I were to write three songs, one song is a super pro Trump dissing Biden song. The next song is super pro Biden dissing Trump. And then the third song is ha ha. I got you. I actually hate both of these dinosaurs. <laughs> and we see people on both sides utilize the song and say, Oh, millennial frog. So great. Cause they will, cause his theory is that they will tune out the bad shit that they don't want to hear just to, just to show the good part of what they like to, to use that to their benefit somehow. And I think he's on, I think he's right. I think he's onto something there where people will like, 
people who want to vote for Trump, they'll be like, yeah, like do a real, he, he was mentioning, do like a real twangy fucking country song. Oh yeah, Donald Trump is the man. Or, I, I don't know, I can't sing, but like, you know, he he would he would figure that out, right? And do one that's like, maybe like a soft rock ballad that's about how like, Biden is the best. He's the smartest, most cognitive president. Like, I don't know, some shit, right? <laughs> And then again, the third song just being like a fucking straight rap song or something like that, where he's just saying about how, yeah, fuck both of these guys. I got you all. I tricked you. Give me money, basically, because that's what people <laughs> are going to be doing. They're going to pay the money to get the songs to support the quote unquote candidate that they like. And he was even mentioning, which I don't know if this is possible because this may be just fraud, but he was he was mentioning maybe we put like a thing that says like all all the all proceeds from this song will go to like whichever campaign, but then put a little asterisk saying, actually, they're not going to that. We're just saying that. So you'll pay us money. And then like, <laughs> and then just see where that goes. But I think the principle is, is sound. I think that there is something to that to be tested and then to see if one singular artist could potentially get people to say, oh, hey, MSNBC or CNN, it shows up. Oh, look at this new artist who's saying these great things about Biden. And then. Fox News playing the song. Oh, look at this new fucking Trump song that we licensed or whatever. And it's like, hey, you guys didn't look into it and see that actually we, we you know, like that, that would be great to be able to do. And I think it would work in, in the way in which he's imagining. So if anything, it would just be great for the lols, like, you know, for the for the Keck W's we would get out of it. Yeah. But I do think that you need to be polarizing. I think you need to fucking maybe not necessarily pick a side. In, a, in an issue, but you need to fucking make it look like it, or you need to fucking attack an issue, or you need to comment on it in some way that provokes people's thought. Yeah, as long I mean, I would like I would like it to exist in that way. The the last thing you just said, where it's not necessarily that you're goading people to act a certain way, but to twist something and make it funny, or yeah point out the stupidity in it or whatever whatever thing you want to pull out of it just so people can think about it for a second but you know people are stupid enough that they're going to find whatever they're going to find whatever thing they want to in that song yeah or the whatever way you present yourself they're going to they're going to do it from like a weird fucking lens because that's what npcs do true and I mean, listen, Millennial Frog sent me his concept that he was inspired now for his next album, which is called This Album Will Offend You, is what he wants to do. And everything was something offensive. Like every song was something literally that would piss off. It's going to piss off Christians. It's going to piss off Jews. It's going to piss off Muslims. It's going to piss off fucking uh, people of every color, creed. There's a song that's about you. And it's meant to be, I guess, inflammatory, but funny, but also just to say you're all fucking stupid. Like, you know, <laughs> there, and if this album doesn't offend you, you are a literal NPC. Like <laughs> you will be offended by something in that album. And, uh, yeah, I, there's no way that our arch enemy CD baby will fucking put it out because they will definitely flag that shit for hate speech. Even though it's satirical, they don't get it. Cause they're fucking Chinese robots or whatever. So what was that? What was that? That artist that we listened to that was, uh, their whole their whole business was that they they, they make meme songs. Little little some. Oh, little little. Uh, God damn it! I fucking I got him on here. Hold on, I, I, I had to look it up real quick because because I want to get I want to get his name. Right. Yeah, <laughs> I get his gotta, name right. Yeah. Uh, little little fucking can't uh, have dead can't have dead air. Little or, darky, yeah, little darky, little darky, yeah. and uh, and the spider gang also a, a little darky and the spider spider gang. Yeah, they wrote like meme song. I mean, the song that he wrote was fucking. He literally wrote a song called Holocaust. He wrote a song called Genocide. He wrote a song called <laughs> the Napoleonic Wars, which had nothing to do with Napoleon or the wars in which he fought in, but was fucking. It's great. Like it's just so great. <laughs> That's the best part, dude. Is that somebody like that? What, what, how many? How many monthly listeners do they have? Oh shit! On Spotify, I could Google that real quick because. Uh, let me see. That shit would be funny to find out if <laughs> this person is doing 90% better than 
people that got, are trying to be he's legitimate. Got 2.7 million monthly listeners. <laughs> yeah, you should just quit making music. Dude, dude. his you, song Holocaust has 85 million streams, <laughs> man. Like, yeah, dude, at this point, you should just quit music if you can't fucking cut it. Fuck, that's not even the biggest one. The song Genocide has 117 <laughs> million streams. <laughs> Uh, anyways, uh, so that's awesome. To further further add on to things, inflammatory things I've been saying on social media, I said that. Oh, yeah. What's that guy's name again? The the do you shitting on? Uh, Nick Pagan. Nick Pagan. What kind of music does he do? Do wop. Are you fucking shitting me? No, I'm not. He's a fucking greaser. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Does he wear the fucking rolled up pants and have his hair slicked back and wear the fucking whatever, whatever shirts? bullshit they do? Oh, yeah. God, I'm sorry, man. I can't abide do up. I just I don't know. I don't know. It's not for me. But anyways, c- continue. What a piece of shit. Let's just. Yeah, I was really encouraging artists that they should just quit music <laughs> because there's an independent artist that has created his own universe, his own reality for his fucking album. And it's like a news network called j-o-s-n tv and the artist's name is ginger root this motherfucker came up with the whole concept to basically promote his albums in a fake what i imagine is a japanese style news network Mm -hmm. that's probably in the time period of the 80s and shit but this motherfucker did it on his own he's independent he's an independent artist and I'm thinking, look what this motherfucker has accomplished. He's created, he's do, he's doing world building to promote his album so it doesn't seem, it's not just asking for you to listen. You get invested, you're like, this is fucking entertaining. And you can't even do that. You can't do that. And this motherfucker is an independent artist just like you. So what's your fucking excuse for why your album is not that interesting? Why you can't divide people? Why you can't get people engaged? This motherfucker did it. So what's your excuse? They're, they don't have one. You know what their excuse is? Their excuse is they're satisfied with mediocrity. That guy you're talking about? That Ginger guy is Root. A, Ginger Root. He is a true entertainer. That's what that guy is. These people that are dabbling let's just call it because to me if you're not all in you're just fucking dabbling right these dabbler artists they're pretenders they're fake they're not they're not serious you're not really trying to entertain people you're just trying to cash in and get a little bit of money because you got a slight modicum of talent that you likely did nothing to earn just like nick the pagan dude you could scam your way to the top you knew your shit wasn't that good So you had to coax people into playing your music to make it believable that your music was worth listening to, which it isn't. But at the the real fact of the matter is you fucking suck. So, yeah, maybe the people who book this guy know that and they're trying to draw heat and get people who hate this guy to come out and boo him. But guess what? You bought a ticket because everybody knows that the fucking the people will show up. To fucking shit on someone. That's where the real money is made. In in the bad guy. In the heel. The villain. That's where the, the fucking true dollars and cents are, are slammed on the table. Because people will pay a lot of money to see somebody they hate get what they deserve. Get what they think they deserve. And they'll chase that feeling. They'll chase that asshole around to fucking see him fuck up so they can say, oh, I was there when Nick the Pagan fell off the stage and fucking broke his leg My, in I some almost, horrible accident. I would almost pay whatever amount of money for this ticket <clears throat> just to see that nobody is in the audience and record it. So I know he's going to tell a different story. Different story. He's going to crop the video. He's going to oh, crop yeah. the photos and just show the fact that he's on stage at the Ford. But I want to go there. I want to go there and show that this motherfucker can't fill a fucking seat at the Ford because he can't do it. You know what would be great is we could engineer the footage that he would use because just by yelling out the whole time, being close to the stage, just ye- yelling out with the exception of a 30 second moment. You, you fucking suck. 
you fucking suck because they can't edit that out and not edit out the music of the song. Like you can't just pick and choose like the things and then leave a 30 second window that we're going to show him and then pan out to the audience. So then when he posts that, we can just show the exact fucking thing and be like, ah, gotcha, bitch. But <laughs> that would be fucking genius. Yeah. Maybe we should. When is this show? Uh, The 26th of this month. Yeah. When is that? That's uh, that's a Wednesday. Can't happen. I don't think it's gonna happen. Yeah, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think we. Can go. I'm sorry, dude. I I don't I don't want to pay the money. But. I, I, you don't want to pay the money, and you don't want to take the time off work to pay just to, to do just, this. Because then, then you you might actually make him a legitimate artist because you're pay you're paying him mind and money. Maybe, but then I mean, just to shit on him. Maybe we can start a feud with him. Maybe Millennial Frog can start a feud with this guy. And that's where the money's going to be at. Because this guy's going to look like, oh, he's the victim. We're attacking him. But then we're the bad guy. So guess what? People are going to tune into our shit to hear what we have to say about this asshole. So ah, it's te- technically beneficial, I guess. Even though, you know. I almost didn't even want to bring this motherfucker up in, in this episode. But now that we did, I just wanted to shit on him. Good. And just, I just want you to know that if you haven't done that level of scammery, or if you haven't done what Ginger Root has done as an artist, you need to fucking quit because you're wasting everybody's fucking time. Yeah, I will say at least Nick the Pagan, even though he's dog shit, still has the fucking wherewithal and the motivation to at least try to scam people out of money. Yeah. I mean, he's you, you can't deny and you got to give the devil his due. He may not be talented or good, but. He's putting in the work to go out to all these radio stations, to go to all these influencers. Hey, uh, would you guys like play my music? You know, no, 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 no. Here, here's some a little bit of money. Here's this, here's that. Yeah. Whatever the fuck he's doing, it's working. He's scamming the people and getting his shit out there. And people are being tricked into thinking it's good. You know what scammery gets under my fucking skin? What's that? It's something that we talked about on BFN briefly, uh-huh. which is these artists that don't have a huge following but they make it seem as though they're contacting contacting a record label or they're being contacted by a record label just to say you need to reach 15 50,000 followers on Instagram or have 50 month 50k monthly listeners on Spotify in order for us to sign you i've seen that a does i've seen that two handfuls of times that people are making these fucking videos and panhandling for sympathy unacceptable unacceptable agreed but i think i just thought of a way to profit off of this all right what if what if we pre-record in a bunch of different voices the phone call the other end of the phone call because all they're doing is just listening to it and then going oh okay thanks like they're not actually having a conversation with oh shucks yeah oh i guess that's it then thanks boss like click so what if we what if we do the thing like so that people of all continents could do it that speak english we do an australian accent one we do we do a an American like some guy from New York or whatever one, and then we do like uh you know fucking whatever do like a regular one like how we talk so like it'd be from L A. We say we'll say like a lot. Say like a lot. Yeah. Like you know we totally like and love your music. Like and we, we just you know we just can't unfortunately do like we, you know business with you we, unless you know you like like you get like fifty thousand followers you know. But we love the vibes. Yeah, we love the vibe. <laughs> Listen, keep like totally keep it up. You know, <laughs> motherfuck. Call us back like when you get like. 50k like when you get 49,999 don't call us but once it hits 50k like totally give us a holler <laughs> like and then do one like you said in like do a canadian one do one so that all these artists and then we'll just sell it like hey for ten dollars we'll license this to you that you can use in your video to make your stupid fucking you know <laughs> your <laughs> stupid pity party fake video your pity party real and you're right it's fucking unacceptable it's horseshit that people will fake you that's some scammery that's what it is there ain't no fucking record label, call, label calling you, telling you this shit. Because if that were the case, if it were true that they didn't want to fucking talk to you unless you had 50,000 followers, guess what? They wouldn't even fucking talk to you. <laughs> the second they looked at you and saw your shit wasn't 50K, they would, no one would be calling you. No one would be calling to tell you to give you the heads up. Oh, hey, by the way, we love your music, but we just can't do any business with any artists unless they have 50,000 followers. Dude, That's a lie. They actually lost $100,000 just talking to you. Yeah. Just wasting their fucking time. <laughs> that, 
there was no way they would contact you. No, because if they contacted everyone they thought was good but didn't have 50,000 followers, that'd take fucking years to contact everybody. So, no, they're not talking to you. They're not. Fuck, if you don't have a fucking agent, they're probably not even talking to you. And even if you do have some shitty independent fucking agent from who knows fucking where, they're still not going to talk to you. They'd call that guy and tell him, hey, yeah, fuck you. Go away. Like, stop calling us. Stop, stop calling. Stop sending us this person's shit because we don't want to. We don't want to hear it. They're not big enough yet. Click. And honestly, I kind of think that if that is, if even if it is true that that they won't talk to you unless you have fifty thousand followers, how fucking short sighted is that? How shitty is that to look at look at someone and go, "This is the metric that we're going to judge you by." How? How wool over the eyes are they in the music industry if that's really what's going on? And I don't believe that for a fucking second because if they see a, a way that they can make money on you, they're going to make money on you. So they're not going to put some artificial barrier to entry. If if they thought they could make money off of you, they're going to get you in no matter how many followers you fucking have. That's That means nothing. People are just stupid and don't know how business works. That's And then, of course... Idiots NPCs on the internet are just like sharing these all around. Oh my god, look at this! It's now I got it to the fifty thousand. That's so fucked up. Oh, and it makes you sympathize with them and then want to support their music, their see, shitty music. Let me, let me let me just go ahead and call out that person because uh, I think I bookmarked it. So oh good, so we could just shit on them. Good, go ahead. Let's fucking <laughs> shit on them. Let me. I don't want to have dead silence. So let yeah, me, okay. let, me let me let me go ahead and, and work on this real quick. Yeah. Well, while, while you're doing that, I will just continue on to say. I get the sentiment behind it, the scammery aspect of it. It's to generate sympathy. It's to draw cheap heat. That's what it is. Yeah, the Vala Band. T H E V A L L A B A N D. Go fuck yourself. You're not that good. And if you're doing this bullshit, you really weren't cut out for it. So stop doing it and fuck off. Yeah. And the guy's like Australian or something, right? In the video, I don't fucking know. I think because I heard somebody with an accent, and I don't think they even took the attention to detail to have some guy with an accent on the phone either. We don't believe that some fucking asshole in America is talking to you, idiot. At least make it believable, which is where the Game Rage Artist Scammery Kit can help you, where you can pay nine ninety nine and we'll license you a a, a fake conversation of with with a fake record executive of a fake record label of your country of origin, man. Just do the work on the storytelling, all right? Fucking pick pick the fucking good shit. Oh my god, you can't even you, you can't even write a decent song. You can't even write fucking dialogue. That's that's a shitty promo, is what that was. That was a shitty promo. That was that was like if so, if I watched that on wrestle in wrestling right now today, I, that'd be like the fucking what's his name with the fucking stormtrooper helmet breaking through the fucking window. Shock trooper, the shock trooper coming through and his helmet falling off and sh- and then he throws up and shits shits himself. That's what I just witnessed when I saw it. When I Man, see people do these things. You know what you really need to do is take one of your bandmates and throw them against a fucking trailer. Yeah, like a lawn dart. If you want to generate heat, that's what you fucking do. Or really, if you really want to generate heat, go to someone who's a rival band of yours, throw them into the side of a fucking trailer. That's how you fucking get something going. And see, that's what I want to do with Millennial Frog, but artists are pussies, and nobody wants to fucking do the dirt. Nobody, and I, and Jesus Christ, we're even offering Millennial Frog will be the bad guy. He'll say all the horrible shit. All you got to do is be a victim. That's all you have to do is be the victim to be the hero of this story to Millennial Frog's villain, and we would make so much money together. But everybody's a pussy, and they don't want to do any fucking dirt. Bottom line, fucking disgusting, unacceptable, pisses me the fuck off. Yeah, there's no, I'm, I don't have anything else to add. That, that was a very, that was a great climax to that was. This, uh, this specific subject. I agree. That was. All right. Well, anyways, what, what did you have lined up for? Uh, Cause you, you had mentioned things previously <laughs> in our conversations leading up to this episode. What, what do you have? So uh, I had a couple of songs, but fuck that. We're not even going to do that this episode. We'll save that for another day. Okay. Uh, well, Cause I had three songs that I wanted to see what your thoughts were. But like I said, I we're already at 40 minutes almost. And Sweet. so fuck it. We'll just get this topic out of the way. Okay. Uh, Cause I mean, I don't know if it's going to be super long, but um, basically I got this fucking email from this place called Groover. And I don't subscribe to them. I don't fucking follow anything they do. I don't know why the fuck I, how I got this email, but it came to my business email, you know, the, the Game Rage email. And I'm like, the fuck is this? And so it said something about Spotify and, I don't know, uh, like artist controversy. So I was like, ah, whatever, I'll click. They, they, they clickbaited me, so I clicked it. So it's this whole thing about, 
oh, we're going to talk about Spotify and how they're doing all these great things, even though everybody's everybody's demanding, um, you know, change in the way that artists are paid out. Everyone's demanding reform because artists are getting screwed. Right. So they basically wrote. So I clicked it because I wanted to see what the fuck they were saying. They wrote this basically fluff piece on Spotify and how, oh, yeah, um, Spotify is now doing this thing where any artist who has a thousand streams or less is not getting paid out anymore. They're not paying anything for that. Okay. And one of the reasons why they're claiming that they're doing this is to, it is because a couple of quote unquote bad actors will go on, they'll upload a song and then they'll have fake listeners come and listen to a thousand, like they'll generate fake listens to a thousand things, right? They pay out three cents for a thousand fuck per thousand streams. Okay. So in order to make any money doing that, you would have to create, Let's just say 3,000 fucking songs. You'd have to generate 3,000 times fucking 1,000 each. That's what? 30,000 fucking views? No, 300,000. 300,000 right? of fake accounts or whatever? What's the number on that? All right. 3,000 times 1,000. Oh, it's 3 million. Okay, so 3 million. Okay. Too many zeros. Yeah, too many zeros. But you, you would generate 3 million views. To make $300. <laughs> the energy that you would spend to even get to that. Is, 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 in, is infinite. It's ridiculous. Who the fuck is doing that? <laughs> no one. But here's the thing. Here's what pissed me off. Is I bet that, yeah, artists aren't making a shit ton of money on Spotify, right? Because they even admitted in this thing that artists are claiming that less than 10% of their income, 95% of artists are claiming that less than 10% of their income comes from spotify and spotify says that they pay out uh i think the number was 60 over sixty thousand artists every year they pay over sixty thousand artists in excess of ten thousand dollars a year for the streams so that's a lot of fucking people making at least 10 g's a year right so if you're some fake asshole it I think the whole reason that they're doing this, because I guarantee you, they're not going to say that they're going to lower to the advertisers and say, oh, well, three million of this right here. These were fake ones. No, they're telling the advertisers, oh, yeah, they're still charging them for this three million, but they're just not paying out anymore. They're just not paying that three cents out. So they're going to keep that three hundred dollars of advertising money. I think this was a way this was a quote unquote, instead of cost cutting, a hidden cost cutting method for Spotify to say, hey, any artist that." A thousand or less. We're keeping your three cents, by the way. Go fuck yourselves. Who knows how many artists are out there that are getting a thousand that, yeah, look, they're not getting rich off of this three cents, but that's three cents that Spotify gets to keep times, fuck, a million songs. Dude, who you, knows? The number of songs that are released per day, I think is like 60 to 80,000. Yeah. So, I'm sure a majority of those are in the thousand or less range. So you figure the one to three cents they'd be paying out for that, that they're now pocketing and also telling their advertisers, because guess what? The, the people who listen to the to the advertisement that as that song plays, it still counts as an advertising buy. So now Spotify is just keeping everybody's money. And I think that's fucking horseshit. I think that's fucking ridiculous for them to say, Oh, a few bad actors are doing this. I don't believe that for a second that, yeah, I do believe that there are people out there that are uploading probably, like you said, a thousand songs a day and generating a thousand downloads each to get three cents to make maybe three grand or whatever. But that's a lot of shit you got to fucking make. That's a lot of work you got to do. You can't really necessarily automate that. So there's a lot of manual fucking bullshit you got to do to fucking make that thing happen. So if you're going to spend eight hours a day for 30 days getting this to get like maybe a couple thousand dollars. Okay. You earned it. I think you fucking earned it because Spotify still getting the views that they're counting and saying, yeah, Hey, we're getting these views and they're charging advertisers based on these views. You're earning them. So you're getting them money. They're profiting off of your fake views now and not letting anybody else profit. Even if you're not a fake view. And on top of, on top of that, Spotify has increased their subscription price to, $20 $20, $20 for the family plan. So. And another thing. Cherry was, on top. Yeah, cherry on top. But another thing that Groover pissed me off with <clears throat> was, well, that's why independent artists should be wary of anyone claiming that they'll get you guaranteed new streams. Unless it's Groover, of course, because we're the one that's real and we really get you more streams. 
that is fucking bullshit. It is. Because you guys are doing the same thing. You're utilizing the same thing that these other assholes are doing. You're getting fake views for people so you can charge them money. Because Groover is just that. A useless middleman in the world of music. Some asshole with a fucking degree. I believe the, the guy who runs the guy who runs Groover has a degree in like management. Okay. No. Yeah, he has his own fucking record label. Also has his own record label too, by the way. But has a degree in management, and yet he's here interfacing with who? Independent artists and high-level bigwigs at record companies and record labels. Groover just got $8 million in fucking funding from who else? Large record companies, major organizations, right? They got $8 million fucking dollars in funding. Groover's a French company, right? They do deal with artists throughout the globe, and I don't think that they're any better at doing what they say they're doing because there's no money in doing what they're saying they're doing. There's no money in legitimately connecting an artist with a record label. It's in bilking an independent artist out of that $20 a month. And you're saying, Hey, we're going to get you some opportunities here maybe, but not really. The, the, the real funny thing is that game, game rage magazine and specifically all gas, no trash. The music podcast is going to do more of a service for artists, whether we shit on an artist or whether we compliment them and recommend them to you, the listeners, there will be a point when we're going to do more of a service for artists for free. Yeah. Then we, we, then any of these assholes that charge money for it. Hell, I think right now, just by shitting on Nick the Pagan, we probably got him fucking 100 more followers just by shitting on him. Because people who are listening to this, the hundreds of people that are going to listen to this, they're going to say, huh, I wonder if Nick the Pagan really is trash. <laughs> so what are they going to do? They're going to go listen. And goddamn, maybe some of them like shitty doo-wop music. And they, wanna, and they, they are now a fan. So you're welcome, Nick the Pagan. When you sit here and you think about fucking responding to us, you should. You should talk shit back to us because that's how we get something going. That's how everybody can benefit. And you're great at scamming. Hell, you'd be you'd fit great in the Game Rage kayfabe fucking playbook with Millennial Frog. Ah, oh, people would love it. Yeah, you're you're Angel Reese. We're, we're Caitlin Clark. Exactly. Exactly. Right. So anyways, that was all I had to say on the on the Groover situation. Good. Fuck them. I I I, I think they're assholes. They're scum. They're just scummy. That that bilking independent artists who don't have money to begin with. It's just like the CD baby thing. Charging people $9.99. Sure, it's great. The returns on it, not that great. But who cares? At least you get your shit out there and you still own it, right? You still get to own it as opposed to going to a record label where they own it. And then they by default by default own you. And now you're basically a musical slave working for pennies on the dollar. So the whole music industry is fucking shit. It's 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 just right. And I understand why people are skeptical of us when they want when we ask them to try to be artists. God damn it. Let me say this correctly. When we ask artists to be interviewed and they basically tell us to fuck off or they ignore us is because everybody is skeptical of anybody in the music industry. Well, guess what, assholes? We're not in the fucking music industry. We just want to help people that we think maybe are good. Hell, even people that we think are bad, like Nick the Pagan, we'd still like to help you out. Fuck. We would do more for you than any record label would. Yeah. Just saying. Yeah. So fucking get out of here. Good luck at the fucking Ford, you stupid fuck. <laughs> get shit on. Uh, anyways. All right. Well, you got anything else to add? No, get shit on. Good. That's get shit on. Good. Way to, way to go. Good. Good ending. Anyways, if you'd like to follow us, you can listen to all of our other podcasts that we have in the in the, in the docket at GameRageMagazine.com. You can follow us on Instagram and TikTok at Game Rage Magazine. You can follow us on Twitter slash X at Game Rage Mag. You can also follow Adam at All Gas No Trash Official, which has all this stuff and more. Uh, if you like being inflamed, fucking follow along. You can you can hear his, all the shit that he talks. It's just it's so great. It's a great supplement to this podcast. Really, it, it really is. Um, also, be on the lookout again, June nineteenth, June nineteenth. June 19th, 619. Oh, shit. Fucking the Rey Mysterio number. What are the fucking odds? What are the fucking odds? 619. Fucking 619. The AKA BK international artist, international best-selling artist, interstate best-selling artist, AKA BK interview. First interview ever, by the way. Exclusive. First interview. We get to say we did that. We have the honor. And they they did us the honor of, of coming on. And she, they were one of the ones that said yes. And we're forever grateful. But listen, 619, just remember 619, 619. 
without censor, aka BK, interview of a lifetime. Book it.